Hey there, sports fans. It's WHMP Sports. I'm here with Rebecca Walker and her husband, Ben. Uh, they have done the first half and then some of the uh, Coca Dona 250, and we're going to do a little, as I'm subjecting them to a little interview here as they have their post run beers. So, how are you guys feeling? Rough. Rough. Okay, t tell us about the course. It's fun if you like rocks. It was, it was super rocky in some sections. Was, what was, where was all that horrible rock? That was just a Jerome. Yeah. So we spent 60 or so miles around the Prescott area. Yeah. Uh, and then we back into Whiskey Row that we left there on a super long sidewalk section. Uh, got out of town, stopped at a convenience store. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the five miles of town. Yep. So uh, you guys did, how many miles did you do before you dropped? About... Um, we dropped between Deer Pass and Sedona. My watch had us at 142. Okay. But I think official race miles is 37 Yeah, so we're not sure. say about 140 miles. So that's nothing. As far as the sections, uh, going into Jerome was a super long downhill with big chicken heads, super loose. Uh, just hurt your feet. And sweat. Yeah. So, what what shoes were you wearing? Um, we were both wearing uh, Topo Ultra Venture Pro, um, which were okay, I guess. Um, I've never raced in them before. Um, I've always worn just regular Ultra Ventures, and um, but we both got blisters really early. Yeah, I'm gonna spare the folks walking, watching the video of shots. Yeah, no, we're not gonna show your feet, but they're bad. Um, and, and for example, we both, we both did cloud splitter, and I wore two of those that way. They did the cloud splitter. They did the hundred mile distance. Right. Yes, and zero blisters for the non-pro ultra ventures. Um, but just between the sand and rocks here, we had blisters for I mean after what, five hours. Yeah, I couldn't imagine not having a shoe with a rock with a rock plate. So you guys have done a few uh, 200 mile races before, so this isn't your first foray at this mega distance. So she's first done. Off and first time, she's she's done Tahoe 200 and Bigfoot 200, and then we both did Moab 240 together yeah, guys, for a honeymoon. Yeah, they, they did. Moab 200 as a honeymoon is not romantic unless you're insane. So. <laughs> Still together. Still yeah. together. That says something about the relationship. So Lee and Carmel are doing this race together as well. So uh, we talked a little bit in the car on the way here about the psychology of in a relationship, both wearing the race bib, neither one of you is wearing a pacer bib, running together. So uh, how do you think that affects your race? Would you do something like this on your own? You have done them on your own before. Would you? Well, on, I mean, I've done them on my own in the sense that, I mean, until I could get a pacer, I was on my own, but he's the best crew. I mean, he's amazing at it, he thinks of everything, he's a former medic, so he can fix stuff, and, um, I mean, and obviously we're married, so he knows me, and he knows my triggers, and what will make me feel better, and, um, and he also paces, so at both Tahoe and Bigfoot, he did over 75 miles of both of um, so he's, in addition to crewing, I mean, he's done big miles. So we're going to have the, the tough question here. Would you rather have him running alongside you with a racer bib or a pacer bib? It's only our, like, our sky. <laughs> it's tough. So this it was, doesn't shock me. So this was so this was tough. This is our first time um, doing this distance without a crew of pacers. And um, oh, as I was telling yeah. Amy, like uh, things that you take for granted when you have a crew, by the end, I mean, by 12, 24 hours in, even filling a bladder for your pack and trying to get it back in your pack and 
much. I mean, it's so time consuming and frustrating, and, and your bladder got completely really fucked up by mile 40. Yeah, so I lost my bladder. You lost his bladder at. Threw it out, so then I was working on three bottles. Oh, the big Copper Creek. Yeah. So you're working on less water in the Arizona sun. Yeah. 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 Which it actually worked out. Yeah. So three 500 bottles were plenty for me. I drink a whole lot less water and I can operate it that way. Yeah. She's a water buffalo and she, she needs to talk. Yeah. So uh, as far as like aid stations and support goes here, how does this compare to other 200 mile races? We talked to him about this and he thinks I'm crazy, but I think part of the problem with this course is the aid stations in the beginning are really close together. Um, so you get some of these where they're like four miles apart, five miles apart, nine miles apart. And it didn't seem to matter. We were still spending the same amount of time at the aid stations. So in the destination trails ones, you maybe only have 12 aid stations. So we already had hit, I don't even know, what aid stations, 13, 14 aid stations by the same mile. And so again, like even uh, like Skull Valley and whatever that other one was. So in eight, nine miles, we hit two aid, three aid stations and we're still spending a half hour, 45 minutes. So that ends up being a time suck because the aid stations is like, I'm happy that they're closer. You're still sitting there and blowing time. Like, and when I finish these races, the fastest I've ever done it is about three hours under cut off. So I'm not somebody who's competitive or getting close to it. I'm kind of in that danger zone for a lot of it. And with all these extra aid stations, I think it was actually a little bit helpful because they were just too close. Yeah. And then by the end, it's like, Knowing you know, there's 13 miles and 14 miles and yeah. 16 miles because and it's further like, apart, and, and you and you know how long even those nine mile sections were. You know, I, I, it, it, it didn't. It wasn't necessarily a gauge of the miles between a station, but it was a time on feet. Yeah. So it kind of throws that out the window, and yeah. you know that shorter distance because of nine miles or six miles is a relatively short amount of. Yeah miles in between an aid station, but it turned into many hours more than expected. But in general, Aerobike was always put on great races, and they have great staff, great volunteers. Good amenities at the... Uh, amenities. Most of the aid stations were great. I think our favorites probably Jerome. Um, Jess Van Den Bush, another uh, set of racers here, says Jerome is the best. Yep. We like the Jerome aid station. Uh, they did great. We didn't Although, like getting to the uh, We were not pleased about getting to the conversation. No. It's just such a rough section. And then obviously the uh, uh, margaritas and tacos at Dead Horse was a welcome surprise. But, but also we've had a very long time coming. We were like, we're going to be in and out. But then they had tacos. And then they had margaritas. And they had indoor bathrooms. And then we decided to get our feet fixed. And that ended up being about like an hour and a half long. Any station stop. Uh, way too long. But... Way too long. Yeah. So what's next? Western States for him. And I'm basically retired now. Um, I have nothing on schedule. Um, I had an overseas 200 plan. After how this went, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bag it. Well, uh, you don't make that decision now. Oh, no. Well, wait wait no. until your feet heal and your body no, heals. No, I've, done, I've done enough of these to know, and um, he wasn't going to be able to go to that one, so it would be um, completely unsupported, like not even having a fellow runner. So that becomes um, logistically getting somewhere in a foreign country, being yeah. completely by myself, like... This was fine, it was okay, but I mean, you don't want to have this type of experience 10,000 miles around. Right. So, um, we, have, we have some stuff in the fall. We're, um, I signed up for Heartland 125 and got a in October. And then inaugural Cowboy 200 in Nebraska. Um, and interestingly, the race director for that race was here in also deal. Chase. Chase. Hammond. So, I'll be interested to hear sound like much of a retirement again. <laughs> well, this, that's the thing when you have a stack schedule and you have cases. But I have, yeah. nothing, I have nothing left for the summer. He's got one for the summer. All right. Um, so. And I'm not in a great mood for Western right now. So I need a little time to yeah. process this and heal up. Yeah. You got, you got six weeks. That's some processing and healing. Yeah. All right. Whole different mo mentality from, from slow here to basically need a PR at Western to finish it. No, it'll be, it'll be quite the swing on 
mentality. We'll be rooting for you. All right. Well, we're going to let them um, finish drinking their beers that are well earned and um, let their bodies start healing from a, a brutal course. So uh, we'll talk to you later, and I think the next time we're talking to you, we'll see uh, Lee and Carmel at an aid station. Ooh.